Hi, this is Roland. Today I want to talk about faith, what it is. Belief in a lie separates you from the truth. You can't believe the truth and believe the lie at the same time. You believe one or the other, the truth or the lie. Belief in a lie separates you from the truth. Now, the lie has a source, and the truth has a source. Belief in the lie separates you from the truth, and it also separates you from the source of truth. The, the soul can in, either incline one way or the other. And when you incline, when a soul inclines toward the lie, then it is turned toward the lie and it is and therefore it is separated from the truth now i'll give you along the way i'll give you some down to earth examples have you know, known someone who w believed the lie for example maybe you had a friend who who was going out with some guy and she thought he was really a nice guy but you knew differently. You knew he was no good. People tried to warn her. She wouldn't listen. Okay. And then the evidence started to mount that he was stringing her along, that he was seeing somebody else, etc., etc. She didn't want to see it. She didn't want to believe it. She was committed to that, to that lie, really. And it may, it may have taken her a long time before she finally saw truth and she or and some people never admit it here's another example have you known someone who became a drug addict then all of a sudden they become separate from a drug addict or it could also be a, a, a gambling addict or an alcoholic but we'll, we'll say a drug addict or a gambling addict everything that is good sweet, everything that is true, everything that's honorable, they are separated from. They become like a, um, like an inhuman. They, they do anything for their drug or to gamble. They destroy the family, the finances, health, everything. And they, they can't see, they, and all of a sudden, the, the value, the sweet values that they once had, love of family, love of of ideals and virtue and all these things, they're all out the window. They don't see them anymore. See? So those are examples. So a lie separates you from the truth. It separates you from the whole field of truth. It separates you from the source of truth. Okay? Do you get, do you, are you starting to get it? So when Adam believed the lie, he believed a lie about becoming big and great and successful on his own, without God, through knowledge. Earlier I was talking about addicts that, um, that just won't see that they're addicts. They won't, and they're totally separated from any kind of truth, and they'll deny the truth. Well, how about Adam? See, how about today? People are still, aren't they addicted to education? Don't we still think that through education we, be, we can become great and um, successful and happy and fulfilled and everything? We still do, don't we? But now, belief in the lie separates you from the truth. But once separated from the truth, see, um, it's very difficult to get back. Because when you, when you believe the lie, then you start responding to the lie. And you start responding to things that represent the lie. You see, the, the drug addict, he begins to, to respond to his drug. And he starts to like all the drug paraphernalia and all the, everything connected with the drug. How, how about the people that are interest, into marijuana? Pretty soon they, 
they're total addicts and they don't see it. They're in total, a, that's a perfect example. They are in absolute total denial, completely separated from the truth. And they're totally dedicated to their, to their, to their drug. They have marijuana t-shirts and marijuana rings and marijuana everything, everything. Paraphernalia and marijuana plants and marijuana, they're growing it and fertilizing it and thinking of it and reading magazines about it and thinking about it and wearing t-shirts that, that's, that have pictures of the leaves. You see, you've seen it, haven't you? Marijuana designs on their wallet and on their rings and on their jewelry and See, that's another classic example. So when you believe the lie, then you're separate. So what is the lie? See, see, the original lie w was that through knowledge. Here's another way of putting it. Through a, a intimate knowledge, through experience, one can become great. And so don't people... Now we want to know ourselves as great through experience, don't we? We want to feel good. Feel wonderful, and so our our Starbucks drink and our massage and our manicure and our and our nice soft uh, furry uh, blankets and sofa and our the leather in our car and all these feelings, see, and we want to feel great and and sensuous and sensual and passion. Through our feelings, we feel great. We feel like a god, see. We feel good. We want to be be good, and we want to feel good. Feel good like God. You see. You see how that how that works. So Adam one, but the Adam did experience. He then partook of this fruit. Then he experienced it, and then he began and began responding to it. Okay, so he 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 gained intimate knowledge of the lie. And the, and the lie through the vehicle of his wife, who he used. And she was used by the serpent also. And through the vehicle of the fruit. And then later through other things, music, to make, make him feel good. To take away the pain, the boredom, the anxiety. And through our drugs and our food and our clothes and our possessions. See, through everything. See, person, the... The uh, died in the wool egotist, which is what Adam became, and what we all are until we know better. That egotist can look at a sunset and feel like it's just for him. See, he feels great. See, he doesn't see that sunset as being great, or God as the creator of the sunset as being great. He doesn't marvel at God's handiwork. No, he he likes the way it makes him feel. See how that works. So now you, you now you are you beginning to understand. And so Adam had intimate knowledge, knew these things, but he broke his rapport with with God. Then he no longer knew God, no longer had intimate knowledge of God. He may have heard about God. See, there's a there's a, a schism in the mind, and a break. And then you can't go back. Well, you, only, only you can only go back if God will take you back through the through the uh, protocol of repentance. See. So from there on, Adam continued, and we do too. When you believe a lie, then you keep responding to the lie and lie things, and what represents the lie, and what stands for the lie, and what symbolizes the lie. See, in the material, physical world or the world of ideas. But, remember what I said, then you become beholden to and obedient to the source of the lie. See? And you're alienated from the source of truth. So now do you see what faith is? Now we've been talking about belief, haven't we? Belief. Belief. Believing lies or believing truth. So how do you get back? Well, you can't get back by, by, by believing this external thing instead of that thing, or that external thing instead of this thing. 
or this, these words instead of those words, or this idea instead of that idea, or this religion instead of that religion. See, they're all externalities. Okay. Sure, you're, be you're better off believing the truth about which is a good car for you. Someone, or which is which is a better brand of um, food to get. I mean, you're better off if you if you believe the truth rather than believe a lie and buy bad stuff. So you're better off that way. But it's but it's not good enough. Remember what Adam became separated from. He became separated from the source of truth. Okay? And so the only thing that will ever solve his problems and restore happiness and joy, fulfillment, the only thing is to be restored to a right relationship with God. Wasn't it David? David was so... See, David loved God. David said, restore... See, David messed up. Just as we believe lies, we also we do the wrong thing. But why do we do the wrong thing? Because of the, of the lie. See? So in the case of David, he saw this lady and he, he thought in his mind that she would bring happiness, joy, and that she would bring fulfillment in it. See, that's what she represented to him. She represented to his feeling great. So he went for it. So she, she in his mind, she represented a lie. So he messed up. He knew in his heart that that was not a good thing to do, but he did it anyway. See, in the Bible, there's, there's someone who says to, to Jesus, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. See, that's the other problem. You sort of know what's true, but you don't believe it deeply enough. It doesn't penetrate. See, it has to penetrate deep into your being to, so that you respond to it. Now all you can do, now you compulsively respond to the lie and to the sensuous and the sensual and the earthy and to ideas and concepts and what people say, people's words. See, all of those revolve around the lie. It was words that Adam listened to. It was food that he ate. It was the woman's hand. So now his Adam and, and all of us men, see, and women too, their life revolves around food and women and words. Food and women and words. Wine, women, and song. That's what a man's life revolves around. Song is like words, right? Words put to music to make to embellish them, to make them even more of an experience. Wine, women, and song. Okay? But, for, but women, it's a slightly different. Even though their lives revolve around food and song too and so on, but they, women, see, resent the men who failed them, the father who failed them, the boyfriends who failed them, her husband who Failed her, doesn't have, who didn't have real love for her. She resents him for that. And then in her resentment, see, which is also forbi forbidden. That's a forbidden act also, for, to, re to hate another person. So we resent another person. Why? So that we can feel, we can puff up. So she puffs up. She feels hard done by. She feels like a martyr being mistreated. She has contempt for him, for, his, for the sniveling dog. Contempt. Utter contempt. See, of course she feels guilty for it. She's a halfway decent lady. She feels guilty for it, but then she has it anyway. And that contempt, see, it serves pride. So the feeling of resentment, the feeling of that come with judgment, the feeling that comes with being hurt and being angry, those feelings are lies that support pride. That you're that you're a wonderful person. That you're a good person. See. You can feel the hurt and feel the resentment and feel like you're a good person when your whole life is based upon hating someone and resenting them and judging them. See? So getting back to being separated from the truth, I haven't quite finished my point yet. So 
we talk, we've talked a lot about belief, haven't we, but not about faith. But now maybe you're ready. I have laid the groundwork. The only thing that can restore you is faith in the source of truth. Okay. Faith in. Well, it starts with belief. So there's, there's the lie which we all go for. In one form or another, we feel we're going to be great through the through partying, through going to the ball game, through spending money, through through making money, through a vacation, staying in a fancy hotel, having someone that says that they love us, okay? Through having a big position or having knowledge or whatever, we think we can be great and good and glorious, okay? But eventually. The truth is always the, the truth, the source of truth, God's, which comes through God's light, is always there. And the truth is says, no, it's not true. It's not true. It's not really that great. It's not really that good. You're not really that nice. You're resentful, hateful, selfish. It says that to you, see? As long as you're egotistical, you see it as a, as a great spoil sport, a wet, wet blanket, okay? A, a downer, see? You hate it. You hate the truth, see, and the bearer of truth. And you love the warm and cozy lies, and you become beholden to the source of those lies, because you need those lies. So you eventually become a slave of the source of lies, because you need them to support yourself. See, the soul needs something to support it. The soul is a creature of belief. We're creatures of belief. Animals don't have belief. Did you ever think about that? Your dog, your cat, your parakeet, giraffes and deer and bunny rabbits, they don't have belief. Humans have belief, so it's a very important thing, this belief. Very important. And so finally, you reach a point where you believe the lie. See, and, you, and it penetrates. And you say, yes, you know. I hate it. I'm resenting my husband. I'm hating my wife. See, I'm being impatient with my child. Yes. You admit it. And feel bad about it. Regret what you see about yourself. See, it's kind of a quiet sadness. See, shame for what you are and what you've always lied about. You wanted to seem great and wonderful and good. And that's another thing you did. You confused people. Some children are driven insane or they become slaves of, of, of a sainted mother who claims that she's so, so wonderful. And then they serve her, see? And they're totally bamboozled. And they, and she th they think that she's great and glorious and wonderful and the source of all good. And they never find themselves. They never grow. And they never find God. See? Believing a lie. And so, if you're the kind of person that's, that's, that's been so clever at making yourself look good and making your husband look bad and confusing your kids, then, you have, then finally, if you see it and admit and see it, it's painful to see and to admit. See? Then you may have to go to your kids and say, you know, I resented your dad. He wasn't perfect, but I can see now he wasn't all that bad, but I gave him a hard time and hated him, and I taught you to hate him. I'm sorry. See, you admit it. Well, and the truth penetrates enough so that you admit your error. You admit your error and are sorry. That, see, well, that's repentance. Now you're believing the truth. You always believed the lies and wanted to believe lies and hated the truth. Now, you're ha you, you believe the truth about the lie. See? And believing that truth, you are believing into the source of that truth, which is God's inner light, his con conscience, a light of conscience which has always been there but which you ignored, and which you fell away from. Remember when you were turned toward the lie? Eventually you didn't know conscience at all or only through lip service, paid lip service to it. But now, now that you start to believe the source, when the source tells you that you're resentful, 
And there's something wrong with being resentful. And that all the glorious things that you had striven for and all your striving, see, trying to make yourself look good and prove something, it's nothing. See? But then, then your opinion of yourself is reduced. William Law said that humility is, is, um, is nothing more than, a, than an accurate assessment of one's own um, self. See? So your opinion of yourself is reduced. See? Which you always were a pauper anyway. Pauper, but you were a pauper begging, begging um, for crumbs from other people and from your music and your drugs and your and your helpers and see a pauper begging for crumbs to support your ego and reinforce your ego and s sustain your pride see now you simply see what you are and now you see that it was all lies and so that remember the emperor didn't have any clothes and the little kid said the emperor didn't have clothes but everybody else was saying oh the emperor's clothes are so wonderful so beautiful yeah, remember that fairy tale now you see the truth You're in your naked ego. You see what you are, a nothing, pretending to be a something. Well, that's good because that, that's the mo that now begins salvation. Now begins salvation. And you, become a, you will become a something, but this time a something of God. But now do you see that it's faith in the source? So faith is not believing in this particular thing or that particular thing. Faith is believing into the source of truth. See? And that saves you from the lies. Because when you believe the truth about the lie, then you see the lie for what it is and you, don't, you no longer believe it. You doubt it. It's a perfect doubt. And you believe the truth. See? That's the beginning of salvation. But it includes repentance. Now do you see that you can't repent yourself? The truth has to be there. The light of truth from God has to be there to repent you. It's the most wonderful. See, and that is, that is the first wholesome response. Okay. Um, that you've ever made as a, as a soul, as a creature created by God in His image. You've responded to the lie, see, haven't you? And lie people. And eventually you became subject to them, didn't you? But now responding to the truth. And the first response is regret by what you see about yourself. Yes, you later you'll see shining truths and beautiful truths. Beautiful. You'll see. You'll see. But first, you have to see a few negative things about yourself. But responding with repentance, see? Responding with repentance is the first positive response. Now you're responding to the truth, the source of truth. Okay? And you believe it. See? My name is Roman.